Hi all, welcome to Dev to Prod Coding. This is Mohit, and in this video, we are going to talk about at the rate query annotation of Spring Data JPA. With the help of at the rate query annotation, we will be executing both JPQL and native SQL queries. But before that, let's talk about JPQL and native SQL query. So JPQL stands for Java Persistent Query Language defined in JPA specification. So JPQL is developed based on SQL syntax uh, basically. So it is used to create queries against entities to store entity related data into a database. So we cannot directly execute them on DB as uh, these are specific to JPA specifications and not to the database, right? So whereas native SQL queries are the SQL statements uh, which can be directly executed in database. So with that, uh, let's uh, start our coding. So in order to uh, demonstrate this at the rate query annotation functionality, I have created a Spring Boot project. So in this Spring Boot project, I have added a Spring Web dependency, Spring Data JPA dependency. For auto generation of getter and setter methods, I will be using Lombok dependency. And I will be connecting my Spring Boot application to MySQL database. So for that, uh, I have used MySQL connector. So to execute our queries, I will be uh, using APIs. So for that, I have created a M controller, employee controller. So this employee controller, I have annotated with uh, at the rate rest controller. So in order to have entity, I have declared this entity with at the rate entity annotation at the rate data to generate getter setters to string methods and to have constructor, no argument constructor. So in this employee entity, we have couple of properties. So one of them is employee ID, so which will be automatically generated by uh, JPA. Then we have name, age, active, active to determine if uh, uh, my employee is active or inactive. The phone number. So this phone number, I am generating a random 10 digit phone number. Then the designation and the salary. So again, the salary I will be generating uh, randomly. So this is my repository, employee repository, which is associated to my employee entity. And the data type for my primary key is long. So this employee repository extends to JPA repository. I have added couple of properties in my application properties to establish a connection to my MySQL database. So I have already inserted a few records in my database. So let's go and check uh, those. So this is my Spring Data JPA DB uh, schema. So in this, you can see we have an employee ta employee table. An employee table, we have total five records. So we have John, Robert, Smith, Bob, Adam, and designation and all the related uh, information. If we saw the active employees, so we have John, Robert, and Bob as an active employees, whereas Smith and Adam is non-active. So with that, uh, let's use at the rate query annotation and generate a simple query. So very first thing, I will be creating an endpoint. So I'm calling that endpoint as get employees. It will return a list of uh, employees. So now let's create a method in a service class. Now in this service class, I have auto wired this employee repository. So we will be using this employee repository. So before using that, let's uh, go to my repository and create a query. So the very first thing is at the rate query annotation. In this, I will be writing query. So let's say I just want to fetch the list of all the employees. So this is my JPQL query. So where I'm selecting all the employees from my employee table. And one more thing that we have to note here is, so whenever you uh, write query and you use from, so this from employee uh, should match with the name of your entity class. So here the name of my entity class is employee and I'm using the same in my repository. If I by mistake, if I change it to employee, then um, then it 
won't work right or else what you can do in the entity you can define the name so for example name you have defined as employee so you can directly use uh, this method uh, this table name in our repository as well but it is not recommended it, it is recommended to use the name of your entity as it is in your repository so for now let's keep it employee let's write a method to it which will return me a list of employee so i am calling it find employees and i'm adding query to it just to avoid any kind of confusion i'm just writing this method so that uh, uh, we know that this is a custom method that we have created so let's save it and use this method in our service class so directly here from here we will return employee repository dot this done so let's uh, boot up our application and try to access the records via postman so now my application is started let's go to my postman so this is my endpoint that we have just created get employees let's try to fetch the data so here you can see it is returning me all the data that is present in my db so that means our sql is working fine so here in console you can see the uh, executed a statement as well now let's see a query with uh, name parameters so we can also pass uh, method parameters to the query by using name parameters so let's see a uh, sql so in the records you can see i have five records because there is a requirement where i want a list of all the uh, manager developer employees whose active state is true so so first let's check the data so here you can see for developers we have total three developers and one manager out of which one developer is non active so let's run this and see the output now here you can see a list of all the employees uh, within manager and developer whose active state is true so let's try to achieve uh, this same sql in our uh, repository so let me uh, write that here so for name parameters so we have to so here we have to use a notation called param in this param we have to pass we have to map this name parameters okay. make sense now so we have to map this and we will be receiving this as a boolean from a service method same for uh, designation list of designations again at the red param and map this name parameter so i want to receive a list of uh, string set designation list so that's it so here instead of list you can use collection also if you are not sure whether you will be getting list or hash set so in that case you can use collection as well so for now let's keep it list so now let's uh, go to our controller and and let's create a endpoint to receive all this parameters so here let's read this active state and designation as a path variable boolean active state and here designation so we have to pass multiple designations uh, so so uh, so in the endpoint i will be passing a comma separated value so let's have them in a path variable as a list of string
so let me rename it to list or list designation list okay now uh, let's return it from service so let's create this method and in that method we will pass this active state and designation list so let's create it okay now from here we have to just use our repository method so let's return so let's use this one so this is the one with that we have created in our repository just pass in the active state comma list of all the designation that we want in our sql So in the controller fine so now the this method is ready in my control and the repository is also set so let's restart my application and test it via postman now my application is restarted so let's go to my postman okay so this is the endpoint that we have created so for example we want active true with manager and developers true manager and developer comma separated values manager and developer so let's try to run this okay so here you can see we got total three records so for employee id 11 12 and 14 so let's go to our db and check so let me run this again so here you can see 11 12 and 14 so that means our query is executing right so instead of true if i make it false false and send so here you can see adam the employee id 15 adam with employee id 15 so it's working for inactive employees as well till now we have seen at the rate query annotation uh, for simple uh, select query from one of our uh, database table and another with different where conditions using name parameters so in the next video we will be checking how to modify your data using this uh, query annotation and we will see that with the help of native sql so that's it for this video thank you